All right, every Friday, Colorado's best attorney empowers us with legal knowledge we can actually use. And today, he has promised to share information that will shock you. All right, Phil Harding has been practicing law in Colorado for 26 years. He's a super lawyer, six years in a row, voted one of the top 100 trial lawyers in Colorado eight years in a row. He's an AV rated attorney, which is the highest rating you can get. And he's a member of the million and multi million dollar advocates forum. Phil Harding joins us now from Harding and Associates. I just have to brag a little bit because the latest issue yep, of the Super thanks. Lawyers came out again for this year. I'm going to go to this little earmarked page that I have because dum -da -da -dum, who's that guy right there? Phil Harding, once again, you did it again. Did it again. That's awesome. Yeah, way to go, thanks. way to go. All right, so you've been teasing us a little bit. You're going to tell something's going to shock us. It what is, is going it? to shock us. Um, and stick with me, we're going to go through a couple things, but I'm going to talk about an EDR. You don't know what that is yet, or if you do, but it's in most everyone's car. As a matter of fact, 96% of the cars that are out today, if you buy it today, a new car, it will be in there. But we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about settlement negotiations and comparative fault. And the reason why we're going to talk about it is because I hear from our viewers all the time, they're dealing with the claims adjuster after they've been injured. And the claims adjuster says, you know, I would offer you this much, but we think that you're partially at fault. So we're not going to pay you as much. So how does that work? Yeah, it's uh, interesting. First, let's go into some background. And okay. when you're doing settlement negotiations with the claims adjuster, our courts would rather have people work out their differences um, instead of taking things to court. So because of that, there's this rule of evidence known as 408. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we have a graphic here for 408 to tell you exactly what it is. And Colorado, the CRE means Colorado Rules of Evidence 408. It says, evidence of the following is not admissible on behalf of any party. Number one, furnishing or offering uh, consideration in compromising or attempting to compromise the claim. In other words, money, right? That's sub one. Sub two says conduct or statements made uh, in negotiating that claim. So anything that you say is totally inadmissible when you're doing wow. these settlement talks with the claims adjuster. So if it, they can't come into court and say, well, wait a second, we were talking and you said that you would accept 10,000 or 20,000, totally okay. inadmissible. But let's talk a little bit about settlement negotiations. It's kind of like squeezing toothpaste out of the tube, right? <laughs> Once it's out, it's out it's there. It's hard to get back in and there. And if you say something like, you know, I know your guy's totally at fault and I was speeding a little bit, so I'll be willing to take less. Inadmissible that you set it in settlement negotiations, but they can get it out another way. And so if a jury, let's say you go to trial, and if a jury determines that you're partially at fault in the accident, it your jury verdict is going to get re, um, reduced by that percentage that the jury decides. And let's look at this. So let's say you go to trial, the jury says, yep, you've been injured by $100,000, but we think 20% is your fault. Therefore, out of that 100000 the other side would only have to pay you 80000 Okay, so can you give us an example then of how this would happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say um, you're driving down the street, someone blows through a stop sign, mm -hmm. um, and you run into them. Okay. But now it's determined that you were speeding, and so the other side, rightfully so, would bring up the defense and said, if you weren't speeding, then you might have been able to avoid this accident. Even though our guy was mostly at fault, right. you're also at fault. So, I mean, he was the guy who blew through. I mean, how are they going to decide you were speeding? Well, a couple things, and this is here we're, we're going to talk about what's known as an EDR, and an EDR stands for Event Data Recorder. All cars have this thing, and look at this. First of all, this is like one page and one graph out of like 20 pages that come out. Whenever there's an event, like a crash, all this data is taken down. And when you look at this graph, see all these different lines? That very top line, first of all, that's the engine RPM. So when you follow that, first of all, if you look at the far left of the screen, mm -hmm. this is five seconds before the crash. Now on the far right side, that shows exactly what went on at the crash. But from this, and later people can look at this, you can see that this car was initially going 25 miles an hour before the accident. Then they took their foot off the brake. So if you go further down, that red line shows when someone had their foot on the brake, when they were accelerating, when they stepped off the brake, um, all of that. And so when you follow this over, you see that this person was going 21 miles an hour at the point of impact. It's wow. amazing all the data that's in there. And this, it's called an EDR. Right, right. event data recorder. It's kind of like the little black box that's in the planes? Yeah, right. it's okay. just like that. Um, now there are other ways also to determine how someone's at fault. You know, after the accident, 
if people take pictures, uh, mm -hmm. they can determine you know, the speed of the cars. You could get an expert witness to come in and talk about that. Um, you uh, would look at skid marks. The expert witness would also kind of look at the crumple zones or pictures. And if you don't have that and your car got fixed, then they'll see what parts were replaced. And from that is another way if they didn't get the EDR. Because if you don't get that EDR and your car is totaled or if it's fixed and you drive it for a while, that's rewritten the data over this EDR. Wow, that's that's really good information. I mean, it is it is shocking that yeah. you know that's all out there like that. And and every car from what year on has the EDR? Well, really, from about 2000 on is when okay. um, most cars started getting it. But the mm -hmm. statistics are 96 percent of the cars, 2017 forward, have this EDR. You know, some other things is remember it's against Colorado law for the other side to call and get a statement with you, from you within 15 days. That's right. And the reason why is because they might say, well, how fast do you think the other car was going that ran mm -hmm. into you? And you're like, wow, like 40 miles an hour. They then pull this EDR and they find out that he was only going 25. Mm. And now when you go to settle a claim, they go, Oh, you exaggerate. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm not going to pay you as much. So you must be exaggerating your claim. Yeah, you've talked talk to us about that trick before. So thank you. Good You're stuff. Welcome. Appreciate yep. it, Bill. And if you have any questions for our legal expert, go to kwgn.com. Click on Colorado's Best. You're going to see Phil Harding's photo right there on the right side. Just click there and send him your questions. He will take the time to answer each of them personally and confidentially. And to reach Harding and Associates directly, here's his phone number, 303-762-9500. You can get a free consultation anytime. You can also check out his website, hlaw.org.